today in the glorious concealedcarry.com shop uh, where all the magic happens as far as all five to six hundred well not of our products that we sell on our site at concealedcarry.com ship right from the warehouse so we're actually here today uh, getting ready to leave tomorrow for a long trip we're going to be doing about 1500 miles heading to pittsburgh where the concealed carry expo is taking place uh, very shortly um finally i'm seeing some people pop in here i was starting to get a little bit nervous all right i understand my connection it's, it popped up a message saying my connection was unstable just a moment ago hello ashley welcome you're the first one to comment we should give you a prize <laughs> sorry i don't ha actually have anything available uh right now today but uh, we appreciate you uh, being here. Hey, Larry. And I see Douglas is watching and Tris, Rich. Thanks for ch joining in. Hello, Casey. Hey, so um, today's shop talk is going to be about the fastest and easiest way to shave off some serious time from your draw, draw stroke. All right, so this will be a pretty simple thing. That most that you all can execute. All right, you just gotta work on it. Um, <laughs> thanks, Ashley. Hello, Jim and Lucas. Alfonso, thanks for joining today. Jotty, Jotty, that's the first time I've seen your name. Am I gaining weight? I certainly hope not. I've been trying to lose a little. Uh, I haven't been working out like I'd like to, but I've been watching a little more closely what I eat and drinking a lot more water. So. Maybe I'm getting water weight. <laughs> hey, Shayna, Michael, and Jay, or Patricia, depending which one of you it is. Uh, I love couples that have their joint Facebook accounts. That would drive me insane. I would not want to get my wife's notifications. Hey, Jerry and Ryan, Bob. Again, today, thanks for joining me on, with, uh, on Shop Talk. Uh, we're going to be talking about the fastest and easiest way to shave off some serious time to save tenths of seconds sometimes seconds depending on depending on who it is shaving off a lot of time saving serious time on your draw stroke okay one really simple uh this is going to be probably a little bit shorter of a of a shop talk to be honest with you because there's not a lot of rocket science here necessarily but this is a dare i say a secret to increasing your draw speed <laughs> Jerry says the camera adds 10 pounds. And I also have it set right now to where it's uh, angled upward slightly so that uh, as a photographer, I know that especially when we're phot photographing women, it's always a good idea to try to shoot down, okay, at a downward angle slightly because it, it's a little bit more thinning. <laughs> and also wide angle lenses also give the appearance of being bigger than you are. And uh, this being an iPhone front facing camera so they can fit as as wide an angle as they can uh, to see is a lot. Well, it, it, it gives the appearance of, if I get really up close, then I start looking even bigger. Uh, and actually I just noticed that I've got uh, something blocking the camera slightly here. I apologize for that. There we go, that should be a little bit better. Alfonso says, can't wait to hear how to improve my draw speed. Absolutely. For some of you, uh, you may already be doing this very well. Uh, you may go, oh yeah, duh, that makes sense. Actually, most of you will go, oh, that makes sense. But with all the teaching that I do on the range, you'd be surprised how many people are afflicted with this draw speed malady, all right? Hey, Logan from Western Kentucky, Cami. Uh, yeah, I don't know about a bite baby face. I don't know. I'm kind of rough today. I haven't shaved in a day or so. Photo tips with Riley. Yes, sir, or ma'am, excuse me, Delana. Uh, yeah, I, I've actually done quite a bit of photography, if you didn't know that about myself. Um, I, I really enjoy landscape photography and, uh, but I've done some portrait shoots as well, done headshots for, you know, like corporate heads, headshots for different businesses and stuff for my insurance uh, agent's office. We, we did headshots for all his, uh, people that work in the office. That was, that was a lot of fun. It's nice to get paid to do photography sometimes. <laughs> Ryan, no rocket science. Unsubscribe. All righty. So with age comes the weight. <laughs> I, I have put on weight, you know, in the last uh, seven, eight years, and uh, but I've actually lost a little bit in the last uh, six months. Not a ton, but a little. So I need to, I'm working on getting back to where I was about eight or nine years ago. 
was a lot healthier place. I mean, I'm not super overweight, but but I, I need to I need to lose some pounds. You want to know how to pick up your sights quicker, Shana? We will do a shop talk about that probably sometime as well, because I've actually been thinking about that a lot uh, lately. All right. So, but today is all about draw speed, and actually, Shana gets this very well, but. She may have forgotten some things, so uh, Shane has been through our Triple Guardian course. She took it out in Cincinnati, Ohio last July, so uh, Shane, this should be a good refresher for you. All right, so uh, let's get started officially now. I do want to point a couple things out. First of all, I'm wearing this sweet, never forget, hat, all right, referring to 9-11, all right. We had the Twin Towers, the Pentagon, and Flight 93. Okay, this is a Hat made by, oops, wrong side, 511. Cool hat. It's made in EMS or fire blue, they call it. Right, so it's, it's a really cool hat with a lot of symbolism going on there. All right, so we have about 2,400 of these we're going to be giving away this week in Pittsburgh. This is a co-sponsored thing with 511. We appreciate them for teaming up with us on it. And we're going to be giving away those hats to those that come to our broadcast booth Friday, Saturday, Sunday at the Concealed Carry Expo in Pittsburgh. All right, this week. I got to hit the road tomorrow morning, bright and early. We've got two long days driving to Pittsburgh. Uh, Jacob and I will be in the truck together. That'll be, that'll be fun. Um, so I know that there's many of you that are going to want these hats, and I apologize. These are available for those that are able to come to Concealed Carry Expo. And, and there's some special meeting there, too, because Flight 93 went down uh, not too far away from Pittsburgh. All right, so... Uh, these are hats that were an overstocked item from 511, and they just were sitting in a, in a warehouse taking up space, and we were able to make out work out a really sweet deal with those guys so we can give away these this remaining overstock uh, to attendees of the Concealed Carry Expo that again, that again come to our, to our uh, broadcast booth, and we're going to ask them to do something. Actually, we're going to ask them, they need to show us already on their phone or download right there while they're at the booth. Uh, our concealed carry gun tools app, and if they have their app on our, if they have our app on their phone, they're going to get a hat for free. All right, really cool hat. So that's the deal. Um, Ryan will pick his up in Lakewood. Uh, I, I wish I could help you with that. I don't know. I, we'll see if we have any extras or leftovers, but it honestly is, is doubtful. But we'll see. All right. So um, anyway, this weekend concealed carry expo, guys, you need to go and make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel. All right. Because we will be going live all weekend long, broadcasting interviews with top people in the industry. Uh, Rob Pincus, uh, Chris Serino, uh, John Correa, Instructor Zero, Tim Schmidt, founder of the USCCA, uh, and a bunch of others will be joining us on the stage at the, at the expo. All right, so watch on our YouTube channel all, all weekend long. And maybe what we could do... Hmm, maybe, maybe we could work out some sort of giveaway of maybe hats virtually uh, for those that are watching. I don't know. I'll talk with Jacob about that. How about that, Ryan? So maybe we can make something work out. Jim, the app is free. It's totally 100% completely free. Always will be free. We'll never have, uh, we'll never charge money for it. At least that, that's been the promise that we've made from the beginning. And uh, also uh, it's, ad, it's ad free. There's no ads in it. All right. There's a possibility we might add in the launch screen, like some little mention, you know, like Concealed Carry Gun Tools app brought to you by, but it'll be just part of the launch screen. It won't be something that's constantly popping up in your face. Okay. All right. Um, Craig says nine millimeters overrated for new shooters. <laughs> yeah, that was a fun discussion, buddy. <laughs> All right. So let's get into it. The number one thing, fastest and easiest way you can save seconds sometimes and for almost any shooter if they're not doing this already they're definitely going to see even half a second sometimes saved off of their draw stroke by doing one simple thing all right i'm going to redirect the camera here so we could talk about it. okay so we're going to bring this down here about like so i'll step back okay so what is that all right now this is true whether you're coming from the appendix position or from four o'clock five o'clock iwb all right, so it's gonna it's gonna work no matter what. What is the fastest and easiest way to save some serious time on your draw stroke? Get to the gun. You listen to this. This is this is like the thing. 
get to your gun really fast. <laughs> okay, I see the people leaving the live feed in droves over that. Get to the gun really fast. All right, so guys, but this is so true. How often have I seen this? I see this all the time at the range. And it's, I've even seen it from experienced shooters, guys that have been shooting a long time, guys that are former cops, military, etc. And they show up in a class and we're trying to work with them on draw speed and they don't get to the gun fast. We say draw or they get a beat from a shot timer and they look like this. And sometimes once they get their hand on the gun, they'll get it out fast, okay? But they'll take their dear sweet old time getting to the gun. Okay? So what do we want to do? We want to get to the gun fast. Gabe White is a well-respected instructor. You, you may not be familiar with the name, but look him up, GabeWhiteTraining.com. He is an awesome dude based up in Washington State, and he teaches some incredible classes. Gabe White is one of the fastest draws alive, all right? And if you watch video of him coming out of the holster and shooting, there's some, a lot of times what you'll hear is a slap because of how hard his hand hits the gun because of how fast he's getting to it, okay? So that's what we are trying to accomplish is save some serious time from whether it's a visual stimulus, okay? If it's a bad guy and we go, shoot, I need to draw on this guy, whether it's an auditory one, we hear gunshots, okay? And we look, we see something, we, we need to draw, or we hear a shot timer, or we're listening to a command from the instructor. Whatever the cue is, when we hear that cue, we, there's no reason to take any unnecessary time to get to that gun in the holster. This can be done even quickly, even with concealment garments. My shirt's over top of the gun today. I do most of my dry fire work now, guys, concealed. Okay? So, in fact, if you watch somebody like Gabe White, and occasionally even me, sometimes I, I nail a really solid draw, sometimes. I could be just as fast clearing a garment and getting the gun out of the holster as I am sometimes coming from an outside waistband, slightly drop, slightly extended out from the waist, competition style holster. Okay? Because it's all about getting to that gun fast. All right? Okay, so obviously we got to clear the garment too, but let's, let's work on this a little bit. So a couple of things got to happen in order for us to get to that gun super quick. All right, especially if we're concealed. This is concealedcarry.com, so we're doing it concealed. So number one, we gotta make sure we get good purchase on the shirt. Now, you can grab the shirt, you can pinch it here. And one cool thing about when you do that is as you pinch it, it starts to already draw the shirt up out of the way. So that's a really cool technique. I don't employ that technique. I have sometimes missed, but I also sometimes miss even going the other technique. I try to do what I call a fan finger approach. So you roll the fingers up the shirt. We're not actually, like some guys will teach like a cup, okay? So we're cupping the shirt, we're grabbing the shirt like this, coming from the bottom, getting a hold of it, getting it up out of the way. But what I have found is if I kind of fan those fingers and roll them up, then if that pinky finger misses, if the ring finger misses, generally I still get a finger on there and get that up and out of the way, okay? Um, I'll get to some of your questions here in just a second, okay? So first, we got to get that shirt up out of the way very quickly. If I'm going from IWB, I obviously got to get my hand all the way over and bring it up like so, so I can draw the gun here. Then, you also need to be with the shooting hand, the dominant hand, that needs to be going to the gun simultaneously. See that? So we're clearing the garment and at the same time, the hand is coming to the gun. Now. Mike Seeklander teaches a two-handed garment clearing technique, which is not bad, but you got to do a lot of practice to be able to get those two hands up, and then you got to be drawing, driving that shooting hand back down to the gun very quickly. With practice, you could do it really fast. It's probably hundredths of a second faster for the fastest guys to, to do each hand independently, where one is clearing the garment and the other is going to the gun. 
but uh, you can still get very fast with that two-handed garment clearing technique that Mike Sieglander teaches, all right? One thing I like about that technique, if you're doing a one-handed dominant hand only draw, you will, I, I like to start to the side of my gun, okay? So I'm right-handed. I want to go to the left side slightly. Number one, I'm not making con weird contact with the gun. I'm not accidentally snagging the grip of the gun and pulling the gun out prematurely. And I've sometimes hit my hand on my rear sight and that doesn't feel very good. So if I go to the, to the side here and draw that up like so, kind of almost like in a circular motion. And the cool thing is that works even with just a single hand because we make sure we get that garment cleared out of the way and then we drive our hand up, back down to the gun. But back to the two hand technique, I'm gonna go with my, my support hand is drawing up the garment, my dominant hand is driving to the gun and that's happening basically simultaneously. Okay, and that's what we're going for. So, one really good dry fire thing, and I've talked about this in Shop Talk before, I've talked about it on the podcast before, but this is a real simple thing to do in dry fire, and that is just to practice getting to that gun fast and indexing it where we want to, where I've got that good master grip. You see I've got the Cool Fire Trainer in there today. Okay, and I wanna make sure I'm nailing that the same way every time, all right? And so there's plenty of dry fire sessions that where that's the only thing I'll do for a dry fire session. Uh, you know, I'm talking like a five or 10 minute thing where I'm just working on clearing the garment, getting to that gun really fast. Okay. Again, this probably seems really overly simple for many of you, but I'm dead serious about this. In fact, even if you already know this, chances are you can still get faster at doing it. So work on it. All right, because I can even still get faster at it. I think, I think I'm pretty fast most of the time, but I'm not, I'm not as fast as Gabe White. All right, so work on this. Do this drill repeatedly. Okay, this is what we would call a micro drill. One simple little thing that's a component of a larger thing. Okay, all right, so now, you, it's probably not a bad idea. So even if I say I'm gonna work on just this one thing during a dry fire session, I'm still going to do a couple repetitions towards the end where I'm actually working on getting out of that holster and presenting out the target. So that way I'm rebuilding that muscle memory again of I want to make, you know, I don't want to just practice getting to here and stopping, okay? Because that could create maybe a weird training scar. And also sometimes shooters will get really good at doing this and then they'll end up with a little bit of a hitch where they kind of will pause before they get the gun out of the holster. So we don't want to have any hitches. We want it to be smooth. We want it to be fast, fluid. Okay, but we're just working on this one thing for today. All right, clear the garment, hit that gun fast. And if you can get a slap like Gabe White, then you definitely know you're probably doing it right. Because that means you're hitting that gun hard and fast. All right, let's go through a draw stroke all the way. Ready? Okay, that's pushing it pretty, pretty hardcore. Generally, as I'm presenting out, I don't want to go boom and hit, hit it super fast because I'm going to get a lot of oscillation when I really want to be picking up the sights and hitting that first shot. So even if we're going to go fast, we want to, we want to slightly slow down as we're hitting the extension so that we can begin picking up the sights. And Shana, that would be one little tip for you as you asked about it earlier, how to pick up my sights quickly. Okay. So that we want to draw fast and I'm going to over exaggerate a little bit here. I'm going to go fast and then slow down. Okay, so I don't get that real hard jerk at the end as I hit extension. All right, so to, to show you a little bit more real speed, here we go. All right. It may not be very obvious to you, but what I see visually is that I see my sights begin to settle as I'm hitting that extension. Ready? Again. Okay. So there's just enough of a deceleration, and I don't always do it perfectly. It, that, that's actually one specific little thing that I'm that I'm usually working on a little bit, but I am getting just a little bit of deceleration in that last inch to two inches of extension so that things settle down and we can find those sights. All right. Uh, let's go ahead and do a repetition where I'm actually going to pr press the trigger. Okay. Cause that's good too. We want to, we want to we work on all these things. Ready? Here we go. Okay. All right. How'd that look? Slow is smooth and smooth is fast. 
Yeah, you know, um, I think, you know, as long as we keep context, you know, correct in that regard, Bobby, because slow is never fast. Slow is never fast. So we hear that statement, slow is smooth and smooth is fast. It's like, it's like a partially true statement. All right. What I mean by that is we have to start building these skills slowly, right? So chances are none of you guys can are quite, well, many of you are probably not quite ready to hit the gun that fast. So you want to start a little bit slower. See how that, that was just a little bit slower, a little bit slower than what I was doing a while ago. Okay. So slow that down a little bit because if you're not hitting and getting your master grip right from the start, then you're probably going a little too fast. You haven't yet achieved muscle memory, okay, subconscious competence on hitting the gun and achieving that grip the same way consistently every time. All right. So we got to slow down to where we can achieve that 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 thing that we're doing, right? That skill, but then we got to start speeding it up, right? So that's the way I think of it is slow is smooth. We, we start slow enough that we can achieve what we're, what we're trying to achieve. But then we got to start picking up the, sp the pace and pushing the envelope. If we never push the envelope, we don't get faster. All right, we will stay slow. So slow is never actually fast. Smooth is fast, can be fast. Okay, we don't want to look crazy or anything, you know, because we're going so fast, it looks all weird and and just chaotic okay we want every movement to be purposeful and efficient okay and that's that's probably the thing is sometimes people try to go fast and it's inefficient fast and so we see a lot of chaos and it looks sloppy all right so we want this we want the smoothness but that that comes from many repetitions done the correct way and we start kind of slowly first right and work our way up all right so uh, I'm going to go back and answer some questions here. Hopefully that's helpful for you, go though. Um, let's see. Where in Washington? Uh, kind of, a, I think, I, you know, I don't remember exactly, but I think he's kind of over by Seattle, but not exactly by Seattle. I'd have to double check on that. I've never been to his, to his training uh, facility or where he does his classes. In fact, I've never been to a Gabe White class. I hope to uh, one day, maybe next year or something. It's not going to happen this year. I already have some training opportunities lined up and it's about as much as I can handle for the year. Scooter asks how comfy my concealed carry appendix carry rig is. Mine is very comfy. All right. And Scooter says it looks way faster than right hip IWB. It's because it is. All right. It's always going to be faster to draw the gun out from the appendix position than from over here. Okay. All right. My support hand, first of all, has to travel further to get to where I can clear the garment reliably. This hand is already fairly close to the gun, so I don't lose much there. But then I do have to travel from here out to here out to there, and that's a greater distance. Okay, here is a lot closer. Both both hands very naturally are they want to be kind of in front of me anyway. Appendix is very fast. All right, that's why I like. Well, one of the many reasons why I like appendix. Jim asked what holster I'm using. The holster I'm using right now is is a custom one that I that I built. All right. Um, it's what I've been wearing for about the last eight, nine months. Uh, well, probably a little bit more than that now. Okay. So it's one that I built my own design and it works very well for me. Um, so it's not available on the market. Maybe one day will be, but not right now. Do I practice sitting in a car and drawing your weapon? I do scooter. And we've done some shop talks on that. In fact, a couple weeks ago, we did one. All right. Go back and catch that one. It's uh, on Facebook. Hey, Chrissy. Um, Douglas does mostly one hand drawing from OWB at three o'clock. Douglas, is there a, a physical reason, a limitation physically why you most do mostly one hand or is there a, uh, some other reason? I'm just curious on that. It's not a bad thing. Again, you should be familiar with how to draw your gun one handed. All right. And accomplish that almost as, you know, it's never going to be quite as fast as a two handed draw. If, if, if you got a clear garment but you can get almost as fast, all right? And you should practice it that way. And you should practice shooting one-handed, all right? 
Um, let's see. I think it's more comfortable for, dip, for women because men generally wear the same types of shirts untucked. Women have layers. Our shirts sometimes have elastics, ties, cuffs are much longer. Give some thought, Valeda, to how to what you're actually wearing. But you're, you are correct, right? Uh, but a, a common concealed carry technique for women is they'll have their, their, their blouse or their shirt, their, their main shirt, and then they may wear something layered over top of that. It gives them a little bit more freedom as far as being able to conceal easily. And so you might have to deal with clearing a garment this way as well as up to get to your gun or something like that. And now that would be true even with a jacket. Same thing for a guy wearing a jacket. You're going to have extra layers. And you got to practice clearing. And you can still do it very fast where this hand is going to do the job of clearing that secondary garment. And this other hand, the support hand, is going to clear the primary garment. Okay. And so we'll clear it and get to the gun almost as fast. Okay. Pretty much, I mean, almost immeasurable. Maybe a couple hundredths of a, of a second difference. Okay. If we've got that really down where we're clearing coat or jacket or second layer. And we're still driving to that gun as quickly as we can. All right, but that's a good thought. Um, let's see. I wish there was another way. Oh, we waited a time to draw, but shot timers require shots. Uh, so this is where using something like Laser App, L-A-S-R, can come in handy because it's going to give us a beep through our computer or mobile device if we're using Laser X. And then it's going to wait for our laser beam to hit the target where, it, where the camera is looking. And it's going to give us our time. All right. So that's how I time my shots, my actual draw. All right. When I'm doing dry fire and it really matters to me to measure it. Okay. Now, guess what? You can make huge improvements on your draw by not necessarily measuring it. Okay. You can do a lot of dry fire, get really good at nailing this and getting it out for a fast and efficient presentation and then go to the range occasionally and put it on the shot timer and see how you're doing. You're going to see improvement. All right. Another technique would be to use a shot timer with a par time. So let's say I'm trying to make sure I nail a draw under a second and a half. That's a good industry standard. I believe that shooters can achieve it a lot faster. Okay. We see them frequently in our classes do a lot faster than a second and a half, but we definitely want to see all students meet a minimum standard of a second and a half. All right, but you can use a shot timer with a part time, say second, say it, set it for a second and a half, and then you get that first initial beep, and then you want to make sure you're getting that trigger press before the second beep. All right, um, thank you, Craig. It is not my first time, obviously. All right, Eric thinks that was awesome. I appreciate it, sir. I do practice that a lot. Um, let's see. How the heck do small of back carry guys draw with any speed? I agree. Small of back is kind of kind of dumb. Uh, I don't care for small of back for a variety of reasons, but speed is definitely a big factor. Small of back is a terrible position to get a gun from. Riley, if I use a leather Galco IWB right hip holster, do I need another holster for appendix carry? Love that speed. Chances are you do because the there are holsters that advertise themselves as being an IWB holster and also an appendix carry holster. Rarely do they work very well for appendix. You usually find a holster purpose built for appendix carry is going to be more comfortable and perform better. Now I've seen some holsters do that successfully where it starts as an appendix holster but can also be carried IWB. It usually works better that way around than trying to take an IWB holster and use it in the appendix position. All right. Um, let's see. I have a good friend that's lightning fast from small back. Yeah. I mean, how, how fast is lightning fast? Because I seriously doubt that if you took that same person and you said, here, learn how to draw from appendix or even three o'clock. And I will bet you they'll still be faster, Tris, from up here than back there. All right. They can be fast from back there, but they're just not going to be as, as fast. And not that Sometimes, you know, a tenth of a second, a twentieth of a second is not going to make that big of a difference, but it can. Um, and I think I addressed Ron's question as well. Thank you, Elke. An hour southeast of Seattle. I kind of thought he was up in that, in that region, but Clackamas. Oh, Oregon. I thought he was in Washington. Maybe he is in Oregon. I knew he was up there in the, nor in the northwest. Uh, um, only thing tucking under this guy is a subcompact, and that's booty. What? I do have a little bit of a gut, all right? 
But you can see I'm making appendix work. There are there are guys that have bigger guts, and I still see some guys make it work. Um, Vetter Light Tuck is a decent holster, Tris. Absolutely. That one's not bad. Douglas says, but the sweep and grab is done one-handed. Yeah, yeah, and that should be practiced. Again, is there a reason why you're doing it that way, where you're doing mostly one-handed? Not that that's a bad thing, but why would we do it mostly one-handed and not also get, you know, I would feel better even if you said I'm, you were doing an equal amount of repetitions, two-handed and one-handed. Um, anyway, let's see. Douglas wears mostly button-downs, not T-shirts. Same techniques apply, Okay. I was just wearing button shirt the other day on Friday, and I did some dry fire. Same techniques apply. Doesn't really matter. Button shirt, t-shirt. I'm gonna either I'm gonna pinch it here and grasp and come up, or I'm gonna hook underneath and bring it up. Okay. And the higher we get that shirt up, the better. Okay. Bring it up to where our presentation wants to naturally occur from. All right. Don't be shortcutting it. Don't be doing this stuff. Okay. You see that? Don't be sweeping it up i want to see that gun come up and out of the holster this is true whether it's from iwb owe three o'clock or appendix carry i want to see that gun come up good and high to where it meets the hand at the center of the chest and then we finish our presentation you could still be really fast doing that okay all right now i might cheat a little bit i might cut a corner slightly there's a big difference between cutting it about here where, or, or at least it looks like it's being cut versus woo coming from the holster basically straight up now you're gonna think all right point fastest distance or fastest time from point a to point b is a straight line my holster's here it's gonna be fast if i go from here to here that is true as far as the path the gun takes but it's not true as far as you being able to shoot effectively why hmm did you ever think about why the why i think is because you'll have a hard time hitting the same consistent spot at your extension and picking up your sights for that first shot. You will lose some time if you try to shortcut it from where you draw from the holster and try to go straight up to the target, you will lose some time. Because when you get here, you're going to be kind of coming up at an upward diagonal direction and you'll usually overshoot the target and you'll miss your sights. Okay, so you either your first shots are going to go high or you're going to hesitate because you won't, you, you will recognize that you don't have a good sight picture yet. So it's almost always faster to get here where our presentation is as straight as we can from just below the chin slightly, boom. Because when we get to about here, we begin seeing the sight in our periphery, peripheral vision. And then boom, and hitting it at a straight angle, more or less, is going to have less oscillation in the gun and in the hands, which means we can see and get the sights aligned faster. All right? So don't cheat and don't shortcut that. Scooter, thank you so much, sir, for your, uh, for your support of Shop Talk and hopefully also the podcast. All righty. Uh, Elky, yeah, so we must, have been most, most, we, must, we must have both been wrong about uh, Gabe. I was thinking it was Washington, but obviously it must be in Oregon. All right, guys, so... Hey, one thing here is I do want to mention. Okay, one thing I want to mention is that this week I want to encourage you to go check out Guardian Nation. All right? We have a 14-day trial. Go to concealedcarry.com forward slash 14-day. 1-4-D-A-Y. Concealedcarry.com forward slash 14-day. Okay? Now, this summer, it's been a little bit slow lately, but we're working on getting things kind of back in the groove, and I've got some ideas about how to improve on the videos and things that we're doing for Guardian Nation members, but we do already have a pretty big library of videos in the members-only area of Guardian Nation. A lot of those videos are intended to help you become a better shooter and a better self-defense-minded individual. So, you got nothing to lose, all right? Take advantage of 14-day free trial of Guardian Nation, concealedcarry.com forward slash 14 day. All right, and get signed up and try it out. There's a lot of, a, a lot of uh, discounts you can take advantage of as a member. Even during that 14 day trial, you can use the uh, Ammo Supply Warehouse discount. All right, uh, you can take a look at all our videos. You can join our Facebook group, all right, and enjoy all of the, the fun banter and chatter that we do in the Facebook group. Okay, a lot of good things and 
that, that you should look into with Guardian Nation. So go try it out, 14 day trial, all right? You got the link, okay? It's also in the description of this video here today. Howard says, I, I have a question. I lost my right leg. I'm very sorry about that, by the way, sir. And all I have is two OW, OWB and one IWB wood and appendix. I think you got a little typo there. Can you tell me what would work for me, please? Uh, okay, I'm not sure exactly. Again, there, there seemed like there's a little bit of a typo in what you typed there, Howard. But um, I think that either carrying OWB or IWB or appendix or whatever would probably work unless you lost a lot of the hip as well. It might, might things, things might get a little bit uh, dicey that way as far as wearing on the hip. But uh, appendix should probably work for you no matter what uh, you've lost as far as legs are concerned, okay? Um, and then if you're spending a lot of time at all in a, in a wheelchair or anything like that, appendix is going to still be your friend because it'll be easier and faster to access the gun from here even while seated than if you got an armrest or something from a chair or wheelchair in the way, all right? Okay, guys, I'm going to wrap it up here again. Work on this, work on that speed of just getting to that gun as fast as you can. You're going to save a lot of time on your draw speed just by hitting the gun quickly. Give it a good old slap. Practice, practice, practice that. Okay, and then make sure you keep that same amount of speed all the way through the draw stroke, okay? Again. Okay, you see that? We want to hit that gun fast, get it out fast. And you'll start seeing one second or less draw, draw times. Okay? My belly's too big for appendix. How big is your belly, Mark? Go check out Spencer Keepers. Look up Spencer Keepers. Just Google Spencer Keepers. Okay, Mark? You're going to learn a lot from Spencer. Big dude with a belly carrying appendix. I know, it's crazy. All right, guys. Take, again, take advantage again of the 14-day trial. ConcealedCarry.com forward slash 14-day also, if you're anywhere near Pittsburgh, come see us Friday, Saturday, Sunday of this next weekend at the Concealed Carry Expo. Get a free hat, okay? And if you can't be there, I'm sorry, but make sure you're subscribed to our YouTube channel. We will also be airing it on Facebook, so you can watch here instead if you'd like, but we'll be in both places. It would still be awesome if you went and subscribed to the ConcealedCarry.com YouTube channel and watch our coverage from the Concealed Carry Expo live all weekend long. All right. We'll catch you later. Take care, guys. Wish us luck on the, on the road tomorrow. Jacob and I will be loving the drive. All right. We'll see you.